everybody doing? Woo -hoo. There we go. Woo -hoo. Welcome online to Tuesday Night Live. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. I absolutely love what I get to do. I love it. I love it. I, I, I told my wife uh, earlier, getting around, I was like, man, every Tuesday I get to show up and do what I am passionate about. It's good. And here's the thing. It doesn't make a difference whether there's one or 100. The word's still the same. That's a good thing. It still works. Still gets the same results. So welcome everybody online. Welcome everybody in the house to Tuesday Night Live. Got some announcements. August 26th, last Friday of the month, 7 to 9, campfire worship in the back. Campfire worship in the back. I know the last times that we've been having it has been amazing. People are showing up. Fellowship is going on. We're ministering healing to people. We're loving on people. We're fellowshipping. I think last time there was even some s'mores, so that was good, too. I don't know if they made them or they bought them up on the truck, but it was good. So August 26th, last Friday of the, of the month, 7 to 9, uh, rem try to remember to bring uh, your lawn chairs. I know that we have some chairs in the back, but uh, maybe the ones that you bring will be a little bit more comfortable. I don't know. And I know that we also pay attention to the weather. For some reason, if we need to have it inside, we can. We thought we were going to do it last time, and it actually wasn't too bad. So that's a good thing. Every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., Tuesday Night Live, show up, bring a friend, because it's good stuff. Friday, 6.30 to 7.30, Hour of Power Pray. From what I understand, from what I know, we're going to show up and pray and things are going to get done. I know that there is an agenda. I know from 6.30 to 7.30, we show up, we pray. Holy Ghost has an agenda, and we're not leaving until we get that agenda done. But I also know that he realized that we're going to be here for an hour, and he's going to get some stuff done within that hour. So we pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray. We believe. We speak out those mysteries. Some Holy Ghost has some connection to work with. And then Sunday's church at the MAC, 10 a.m. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. For those of you online, if you want a text to give, text to 573-229-0820. And I did that without looking at a paper this time. Progress, baby. Then you go back and you're like, I did say that right, didn't I? 573-229-0820. Guys, I say this over and over and over. I know it seems like I'm running into the ground. But when you become a part of a ministry and you find that place that you call home, that place that pours into you. You, you, you. It's just a connection. You don't even know how to describe it. Pour into that place. It does take finances to do stuff. Now, are we in debt? Do we need it to pay off stuff? No. This is to bless you. Yes, you're already blessed, but you're getting seed into good ground. I know years ago I used to help my grandpa with uh, harvest. Um, for years I did that. Grew up doing it. He planted that wheat where it was good ground so he knew that he would get a good harvest. And every year he did. Plant that seed into good ground, and I promise you your harvest is going to come in more than what you even have room for, that it's going to overflow, and you just can't help but to start telling your neighbors, hey, you got some room? You can just have that. <laughs> I, I'm having so much coming in that it's just spilling out. I'm going to ask Curtis. That happens to him all the time. He is just... He's a receiver of God's abundant blessing, and it comes in him. And I've always told the Lord, if you can get it through to me, you will get it through me. And I, and I know that this is a place that does that. They help out so many people that are in need. So are you guys ready for worship? Yeah. Enough of me talking and doing all this. I'm ready to get in. I know the song is amazing. <laughs> guys, come worship. Have an open heart and know. Here's the thing. That is so cool. You don't have to wait until the end of service to have hands laid upon you to receive whatever you need. Because the Father's already here because you showed up. Amen. The same Father that's here during service is the same Father that's in you if you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and the enemy's trying to give you alarming symptoms. Amen. The same way that you would run him out in here, oh, my faith is up. Well, you got that same faith at home. And this is what I like about this ministry. It's not about the person out here. It's about who you are in Christ. So when the enemy comes a knocking, Jesus answers the door and he's got to go because yep. he lives in you. So we're going to worship and do this thing. Amen. Hello, church. This is not a trick. I am not George. <laughs> 
<laughs> but hallelujah, we are going to worship tonight just the same. Welcome, welcome to MHC. All of you who are here, thank you for coming. All of those online, thank you for joining. How many of you feel blessed to be in the house of the Father right now? Amen. You know, no matter where you're at on this personal journey that you're taking here, you know, in this world, God is with you and he's at work in your life. And he has brought us all together at this particular time in this place because we have work to do, church. So let's sing a little bit about that, okay? Father's in the room. 
the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house My friends, I got good news for you you are the Father's house. Amen. I hope you get that. That you yourself are the Father's house. So check your shame, failure, defeat, whatever it is that's happened since Sunday morning. <laughs> whatever, whatever's came through and knocked on your door and barged on in that was not the Father's heart for you nor his will, check it at the door. Because pain, discouragement, and discomfort, and things that happen in your life, it'll come in different ways and shapes for different people. So I want to talk to you tonight about something. It's called the explosive power in the name. Explosive power in the name. So when I knew they were going to play this song, I was like, man, I, I, I know I've heard that before, just the, 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 the heading to it. I was like, man, this sounds familiar. So I asked Lacey to, uh, man, have, have a Google play it at home in the kitchen. And, man, the lyrics were going, and all of a sudden the wheels start turning. Ooh, you can preach on that. You can preach on that. You can preach on that. All this stuff's going. So hear this out real quick. Failure is never final. Sickness is never final. The doctor's report is never final. Oppression and depression is never final. Messing up is never final. Divorce is never final. A broken heart's never final. Shame and condemnation is never final. Death is never final when the Father is in the house. He is here because you are his sanctuary, his dwelling place. If you are here, then guess what? He's here. Failure is never final because he lives big on the inside of you. Now, everything that I just mentioned in that, brings pain, brings discouragement to the point to where some people never make it out. They don't know who to turn to. They don't know what to turn to. And what they turned to sometimes helped bring about the death. Well, we know who to turn to. And now that world needs to know who to turn to when, the sa when Satan's kicking them in the teeth. Now we get to come along and tell them that there's explosive power in that name to drive out every demonic force that's going on in your life. Now, I know that there's a lot of good messages out there about the power of the name of Jesus. Well, guess what? I'm going to be me. I'm going to preach it the way it, it, it gets to me. It gets my attention. And I got to thinking about this. Man, you know, there's so much power that was invested in that name. In that name, demons will flee. If you think about it, in the very beginning... The father was looking at someone and saying, let us make man. Who was the father looking at? Jesus. He could have cashed in an angel. He could have cashed in some of the streets, some of the gates. I mean, it's not like there's anything that was impossible to God. He could have went over and cashed in anything to pay for the mess up of humanity. But he went to the very top and he sent heaven's best. If that doesn't tell you how much God loves you, well, come down here and we'll lay hands on you. <laughs> I meant for him to send anything. And here's the thing. You know when people sometimes say, well, shame on you. Well, no, that's not God. That's not correct. If God was going to do something, he just would have left us in our shame and never done nothing at all. But he didn't. He rescued us out of that shame, out of that pit. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. So I want you to get excited tonight. Listen, I don't want you to go by how you feel. When it's time for ministry, man, if you need something, do not wait till the end. Come and take it. I mean, do, who, we, who do we identify with in the Bible? Jesus, correct? So this isn't crazy. Don't look at it crazy for me to say this. This should be normal for a Christian to say, if you need something, 
If you have to come up and just touch a piece of my clothing, they're the person next to you. Oh, come on. No, think about it. Who lives in Dion? Who would this year identify with? So in the same Jesus that was in Paul, the same Jesus that's in her? What about the same Jesus that was in Peter in a shadow over? Is that not the same Jesus? Then why do we keep pointing that out to certain ministers? Got good news for you. Someday our eyes are going to be open and we're going to be like, are you kidding me? That power was in me. And Jesus is just going to smile and say, "Uh uh-huh. What'd you do with it? What'd you do with it? Babe Ruth was not known as the home run king until he started swinging for the fences. He might not have hit a home run every time, but he hit enough to be recognized and remembered. You get what I'm going with that? Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Because of that obedience, God exalted him and multiplied his greatness. He has now been given the greatest of all names, even the name that was on that paper that you read that the doctor gave you. The authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee, not some, every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. I got good news for you guys. Every demon in hell and every sickness and disease and every spirit of infirmity knows really good that name and that person of Jesus because he paid him a visit once and he embarrassed him and paralyzed him and took back the keys and then came back and grabbed the keys are in your purse. Can I have them? This is what Jesus did when he came and he stripped the devil of everything. He turned around and got those keys and walked right by us before he sinned and it says, now you take care of business. It's not hot potato, hot potato. Why did he do that? It's simple. We make it hard. When you give your children the keys to the car, you trust them to take care of that vehicle and to handle business. Doesn't mean that they'll always come back. (laughs) Yeah. You get where I'm going. Jesus entrusts us. To the point to where he says, it is better that I leave. They didn't get that. They're like, no, I've been walking with you for three and a half years, and you're telling me after everything that I've seen and heard, Jesus, are you okay? He goes, no, you don't understand. It's better. It's for your benefit that I leave, because when I leave, there's going to be a whole bunch of Christ in the earth. That's good news. It says, the authority of the name of Jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence. Everything and everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and in the demonic realm. And every tongue will proclaim in every language, Jesus Christ is Lord, Yahweh, bringing glory and honor to God, his Father. Every knee will bow. In the heavenly realm, you know they already do that because he is the king of kings. In the earthly realm, whether they want to or not, they will bow that knee. But they already know to bow that knee in hell. When there's hell going on in your body, it is a believer's opportunity to stand before that presence that's going on in their body and make that knee bow. I don't care what that demon's name. I don't care what that demonic influence's name. I don't care if it comes in cancer. Because see, as far as God is concerned, a stuffy nose and a cancer (laughs) ain't nothing. We're the ones that make it a big deal in here. Why? 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 When it says every knee shall bow, it doesn't say every flu-like symptoms and every stuffy nose, its knee will bow. But the knee to cancer, there's going to be a struggle. Hopefully we'll go all nine rounds. One of us will walk out. doesn't say anything like that. I know I give dramatic, weird stuff like that. But if it helps me, hopefully it helps you. If it doesn't, well, then it helps me. (laughs) 
Do you get where I'm going with this? There's power in that name. There is supreme power in the name of Jesus. Well, that name is of a person, and it's Jesus, and he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, everything that has a name will bow its knee and submit to the lordship of Jesus and that name. Every sickness, every disease, every demon and devil, every bit of death, every decay, every evil work will be made to get down on one knee and bow its head to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. See, the greater one stands before them, and they have to come to know his name and the power in that name, and that person is Jesus. Acts chapter 4, verses 7 through 31 They made Peter and John stand in front of the council as they questioned them, saying, tell us, by what power and authority have you done these things? Man, I read this today, and it got me all excited because I see what's happening today. Sounds really familiar when you hear the story of it. They made Peter and John stand in front of the council as they questioned them, saying, tell us, by what power and authority have you done these things? Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, answered, respected elders and leaders of the people, listen, Are we being put on trial today for doing an act of kindness by healing a frail, crippled man? When then, you and everyone else in Israel should know that it is by the power of the name of Jesus that the crippled man stands here today completely healed. You crucified Jesus Christ of Nazareth, but God raised him from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that you, the builders, have rejected, and now he has become the cornerstone. There is no one else who has the power to save us, for there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which, it, by, by which we must experience salvation. That name is Jesus. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who had never had religious training. Sounds really familiar, doesn't it? Then they begin to understand, listen to this. God, this hit me like. Then they begin to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with them. God, that stood out to me today. Then they begin to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with him. Standing there with them was the healed man, and there was nothing further they could say. Why? Because a miracle will settle the issue. Standing before them was a healed man. Man. So they ordered them to leave the room while they discussed the matter. Among themselves, they said, what should we do with these men? Everybody in Jerusalem can clearly see that they performed a notable sign and wonder. We can't deny that. My friends, if they did it then, then we're supposed to be doing it now. The stuff in the Bible was not written for us to go, wow, it's meant for you to replicate it. It's meant for you to replicate it. Everyone in Jerusalem can clearly see that they performed a notable sign and wonder. We can't deny that. But to keep this propaganda from spreading any further among the people, let's threaten them severely and warn them to never speak among anybody in that name again. So they had them brought back in before the council, and they commanded them to never teach the people or speak again using the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, you can judge for yourselves. Is it better to listen to you or to God? It's impossible for us to stop speaking about all the things we've seen and heard. Since the members of the council couldn't come up with a crime they could punish them for, they threatened them one more time and let them go. All the people praised God, thrilled over the miraculous healing of the crippled man And the man who received this miracle sign of healing was over 40 years old. As soon as they were released from custody, Peter and John went to the other believers and explained all that had happened with the high priest and the elders. They raised their voices in unity and prayed, Lord Yahweh, you are the Lord of all. You created the universe, the earth, the sky, the sea, and everything that is in them. And you spoke by the Holy Spirit through your servant David, our forefather, saying, How dare the nations plan a rebellion, ranting and raging against the Lord Most High. Those people that are out there doing that stuff and governments better listen really clearly. 
because they think stuff's on their shoulders, they don't have nothing. They don't have nothing. How dare the nations plan a rebellion, ranting and raging against the Lord Most High. Their foolish plots are futile. Look at how the kings of the earth take their stand with the rules scheming and conspiring together against God and his anointed Messiah. In fact, Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Jews and non-Jews, met together to take their stand against your holy servant, Jesus the Messiah. They did to him all that your purpose and will had determined according to the destiny that you marked out for him. So now, Lord... Listen to their threats to harm us, because it's never changed. Empower us, your servants, to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch out your hand of power to heal, through us to heal, and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son, Jesus. As they prayed, the earth shook beneath them, causing the building they were in to tremble. Each one of them was filled with the Holy Ghost, and they proclaimed the word of God with unrestrained boldness. Got good news for you, my friends. They're still after us to not preach in that name. So what will we do? Listening to their threats and obeying? No, you can obey one of two people, either God or man. Which one will we obey? Which one we will go out with boldness? Because the Bible says, if God be for you, then who dare be against you? See, that name holds all power and authority in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth, hell. That name causes the crippled to walk, the deaf to hear, the mute to sing, that dead body come back to life again. All of heaven is invested into that name. That name and the person who holds that name is the power source of heaven. Every demon in hell is afraid of that person and his name. Well, how do I know that? The Bible tells me so. Remember, we sang that when we were kids. Why did we believe it then? But along the way, we happened to, well, I don't know if I believe that. What about Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19? When the 70 missionaries returned to Jesus, they were ecstatic with joy, telling him, Lord, even the, dumb, the, the demons, about said dummies, that too. Lord, even the demon dummies obeyed us when we commanded them in your name. Did you get that? Even the demons obeyed us when we commanded in whose name? The name of Jesus. Jesus replied, while you were ministering, I watched Satan. Now listen, while you were ministering, while you were laying hands upon the sick, while you were casting out demons and devils, Jesus said, while you were ministering and doing that, I saw Satan topple. Just hit the earth like lightning. Things happen in the spirit realm just because you don't see it with your natural eyes, my friends. Don't stop just because your natural eyes is like, well, what's going on here? Things are going on in the spirit. The Bible says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of a demonic realm. Well, whose name is it that makes those demons shriek in, 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 in fear? I mean, they try to put fear on us. No, we're going to put fear right back on you in the name, in the name it says, while you were ministering, this is Jesus speaking, while you were ministering, I watched Satan topple until he fell suddenly from heaven like lightning to the ground. Now you understand that I have imparted to you my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power. Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will harm you as you walk in this authority. That's a good time to say glory to God. In this name, the name of Jesus, all manner of sickness and disease and all demons have to submit and listen to the one who carries with authority the name and person of Jesus in them and on their lips. This means when that name is preached and ministered, that every sickness and every disease and every demon must leave your body in that name. 
the name of Jesus. In Satan's kingdom, there is death, sickness, and disease. But Jesus imparted to you his authority to trample over that kingdom. Knock, knock, who's there? Jesus, we're coming in. See, when we got born again, it was never God's will for us just to stay safe. No, we're supposed to go right back into hell's territory, kick open some doors, use the sword of the Spirit, and get that thing bloody and rescue people out of that kingdom. Not a safe zone. You're wearing an armor of God for what? To set down? No, it means there's going to be a battle, but we've already won, but you still got to show up. In Satan's kingdom, there is death, sickness, and disease, but Jesus imparted to you his authority to trample over his kingdom of darkness and every demon that is there. Nothing by any means will harm you. You will bring life back to the dead and life back into your body that has been sick or diseased. How? In the name of Jesus. What about Romans 10, 13? And it's true. Everyone who calls on what? The Lord's name will experience new life. They'll experience new life by getting born again, by becoming a new creature in Christ. But by whose name? Jesus. Not an angel. Not one of the greats that went before Jesus. Not Elijah. Not Elijah. Not Moses. Not Abraham. They were great. But they served the great I am. See, the great I am is the power source, and that power source is one with you. That means that every time you come into a, a, a place where there's darkness, to where king, the, Satan's kingdom you can see is operating, that name of Jesus on your lips and in your heart is more than enough for him to pack his bags and get to stepping. We carry that name. Why? Because we carry that person. Not everyone who calls upon the government or the best, most popular doctor. You got that, didn't you? Everybody who calls on the name of the government will experience new life. <laughs> that's worth laughing at right there. Everybody who calls upon the name of the doctor that's in the Mayo Clinic will experience new life. Everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus will experience new life. Not everybody who calls upon the government or the most popular doctor. No, it's the name of Jesus is where the source of life and power is. Guys, we're coming into a time to where you better find out whose trust you trust in and whose name you'll abide under. You get where I'm going with that? Yeah, that needs to be preached from the pulpit. It does, because we're supposed to give them truth. We're supposed to give them life. You better watch out who you're trusting. Jesus has never once failed you. On your worst day, he never once kicked you to the curb and said, I'm done. Nope, he was there to say, hey, where's your position and your possession? He's there to remind you, where's your position and where's your possession? You could feel like a piece of trash that got kicked to the curb and you go, Jesus, what do you mean where's my position and where's my possession? Where's your position at? It's at my right hand. What's your possession? The life of God and righteousness. Don't forget who you are, son, daughter. You're not what you do. You're who you are in the spirit. Just because you had a bad day, that bad day don't define you. Jesus in that name defines you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. It's true that some of you once lived in those lifestyles, but now you have been purified from sin, made holy, and given a perfect standing before God. Did you get that? a perfect standing before God, all because of the power of the name of the Lord Jesus. All because of the power of the name of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, and through our union with the Spirit of God. I know I've talked about this a lot, but I'm going to continue to talk about it. What is union? I just got, just, just think about it. What is union? What's union? There you go. That's why they compare it to getting married. And the two shall become one flesh. Well, 1 Corinthians 6, 17 talks about that when you've joined unto the Lord, you've now formed one, you've been mingled together as one spirit. Well, what is the real you? 
Are you what you see in the mirror? No, that's your flesh. Are you just a soul, just an intellect? No, that's something you possess. But you are a spirit being, and your spirit and Jesus' spirit has now became one. That's good news. That means that no matter what situation you're in and no matter where you go, the greater one is on the scene. See, the person who holds that name of Jesus is your righteousness and perfection before God. It's all been given to you in the power of of the name of Jesus. What about Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 20? And he said to them, as you go into the world, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. Whoever believes the good news and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe the good news will be condemned. And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. They will lay hands on the sick and heal them. How? In the power of that name. After saying these things, Jesus was lifted up into heaven and set down at the place of honor at the right hand of God. And the apostles or the believer, believing, believers went out announcing the good news everywhere as the Lord consistently worked with them. What was he doing working with them? Proving the message that they preached with miracle signs that accompanied and followed the word. Why? Because it was the person and the name that did it. It backed them up. It backed them up. Why do we expect anything different today? I mean, do we believe the word or do we not? So if that happened then and Jesus consistently worked with them, validating the message that was preached, well, what are we doing right here, right now? Preaching the message. Then why would we not expect for the Lord to work with the messenger consistently validating the message that was preached with miracle signs that followed. This is why we should believe that, right, what I just said. Because Hebrews 13, says, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why would we think he did it then, but he, he won't do it today, and that he won't do it tomorrow? Well, we might as well call Jesus a liar. You can't pick and choose when Jesus is going to show up. If he says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if he healed then, guess what? He heals today, and he's going to be healing tomorrow too. If he raised the dead then, then he does it today, and he'll do it tomorrow. If he lives in his believer and performs miracle signs and one, have you ever thought about that? The same God that provided manna every day is the same God that lives in you. So why would he, prov not, not, why would he not provide for you today? The same God that when it looked impossible and the horses are breathing down their neck and a sea is before them. We just think a little bit of water moved. A sea. Do you realize that a sea is miles upon miles in height? I mean, as far as you could see, your eye couldn't even see that high of how tall that wall of water was. And you're walking across not muddy water, dry land. And we come into impossible possible situations and we think that we need to do something? No, we have one thing to do. Believe that the same God that did it then, he'll do it today. So we don't have any more excuse. Well, God, it's impossible. <laughs> He's just going to laugh and say, did you read what I did back then? I, I, I wasn't for sure if you read that. A body that was stinking and decaying. Have you ever thought maybe why Jesus waited a little bit longer to raise Lazarus? Did he not say that you would see the glory of God? In other words, this is what he, what he was basically saying. Why did you not do something about it? Why do I have to come do something that I told you that you could do? I know that puts a responsibility on us, and it makes us start like, oh, no. But... If Jesus believes in you, my friends, you don't need anybody else to believe in you. If he said that you could do it, take it to the bank, sign your name where it says endorse here, and you're going to get everything that's written on that check. 
It's that simple. (laughs) He means what he says. That same God lives in you. Every miraculous work that was done that you saw God involved, that same God lives in you. But though when we see those stories, we're like, wow. But you weren't born then. You were born and you're living now. So that tells me that, man, I must be saved for even greater than that. Oh, wait, that's scripture, isn't it? Huh. John 14, 12. The works that I've been doing, you're going to do. But even greater works than these are you going to do because I go to be with my Father in heaven. Well, what were the works that he was already doing? Raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out demons and devils, multiplying food and water, having dominion over the natural realm, walking on water, calming the seas. My friends, we're supposed to be doing that same thing. When you're watching the weather and it doesn't look very good outside, the newscaster's saying a tornado's coming your way, you don't have to just take shelter in a bunker. You can go right out into that yard, look at that thing, and say, no, you're not. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in the heavenly realm, in the earthly realm, and the realm beneath. Did he not say that? And then he turned around and said, I've given them authority on the earth. He said that to them to them in the very beginning. And everything on the earth that creeps on the earth, everything in the water, I've given them authority over everything. Why are we not taking our authority in our place? Why? Why? Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Afterwards, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to himself the man he wanted to be as close, the men that he wanted to be his close companions. So they went up with him. He appointed the 12 whom he named apostles. He wanted them to be continually at his side as his friends so that they so that he could send them out to preach and to have authority to heal the sick and to cast out demons. Well, how are they going to do that? In the name of Jesus. On the behalf of uh, of whom I'm one with. And see, at that time, they weren't one with Jesus. Matter of fact, I'll even go as far as they were doing it, and they weren't even born again. And they're getting those results but now God made his dwelling place on the inside of us, we should be expecting the same but, not, but even greater results. Why? Because that greater one lives on the inside of us. Why are we letting them have it better when Jesus didn't even live, it, live, it, live in them at that time? Why are we letting them have it better than where we're supposed to be living? He told them to go out. They knew him and the power that came through him. We ought to be doing the same. See, these disciples were not able to do these things unless they used the name of Jesus, the person of that name in which they have been spending much time with. They knew him and the power that came through him, and that power was in him and his name. What about John 1.12? What about John 1.12? But those who embraced him and took hold of his name, he gave authority to become the children of of God. Who did you have to believe in? What power and what name did you have to believe in to call to even get born again? Born again. Born again. What name was it? What person was it? Jesus. It wasn't the top angel of heaven. It wasn't a great that went before us. It was in the power of the name of Jesus. That's where that explosiveness is. My friends, you became a son and a daughter by receiving him and his name. Hebrews 1.4. He is infinitely greater than angels. Wow. For he had inherited a rank and a name far greater than theirs. He inherited a name and a rank far greater than theirs. And I got good news for you. You've became one with that person that holds that name. Man, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Hebrews, no, I'm sorry, we'll go Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. I need to slow down, I'm getting excited. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. But God still loved us with such a great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into, into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Guys, there's power in the person and there's power in the name. They're one. That person has been so united with you that when he sees himself, he sees you. So when we see ourselves, we better start seeing him. Our current position is in Christ at the place of all power and authority. I'm going to say that again. Our current position, not when you get to heaven, right here, right now, our current position is in Christ and at the place of all power and authority and the heavenly realm. Our place is in him. When we are in him, we have his name and the power that is in the person and that name. We are co-seated in the name and that person. It's Jesus. Mark chapter 1, verses 23 through 45. Mark chapter 1, verses 23 through 45. Suddenly during the meeting, a demon-possessed man screamed out, Hey, leave us alone, Jesus the victorious. Man, he got that right. I know who you are. You're God's holy one, and you have come to destroy us. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Silence, you are bound. Come out of him. The man's body shook violently in spasms, and the demon hurled him to the floor until it finally came out of him with a deafening shriek. The crowd was awestruck and kept saying among themselves, what is this new teaching that comes with such authority? With merely a word, he commands demons to come out, and they obey him. So the reports about Jesus spread like wildfire throughout every community in Galilee. Now, as soon as they left the meeting, they went straight to Simon and Andrew's house along with Jacob and John. Simon's mother-in-law was bedridden, sick with a high fever. So the first thing they did was to tell Jesus about her. He walked up to her bedside, gently took her hand, and raised her up. His, her fever disappeared, and she began to serve them. Later in the day, just after Sabbath ended at sunset, the people kept bringing to Jesus all who were sick and tormented by, by demons until the whole village was crowded around the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. But he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew who he really was. Demons know who Jesus is. They better know who we are. Because we're one with that person of Jesus. Now, if you'll listen so far, you'll get the reason why I put all that in there is because if you see in all the miracles that are happening, all the healings that are happening, all the demons that are shrieking out because they know that name, you carry that name. You carry that person of Jesus. The next morning, Jesus got up long before daylight, left the house while while it was dark, and made his way to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. Later, Simon and his friends searched for him, and when they finally tracked him down, they told him, everyone is looking for you. They want you. Jesus replied, we have to go, on this, we have to, go to the surrounding villages so that I can share my message with the people there, for that is my mission. So he went throughout the region of Galilee, preaching in the Jewish synagogues and casting out demons. On one occasion, a leper came and threw himself down in front of Jesus, pleading for his healing, saying, grab a hold of what Jesus said. The man says, you have the power to heal me right now if you really want to. This is where a lot of people are. I know you have the power to do it. I don't question that. But do you really want to heal me? Remember, this was put in there for a reason. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It would be unjust for Jesus to say it to this man today, but look you in the eye and say anything different. So the same thing that he said to this man, you'll never find him saying, well, I meant you're being taught a lesson. I need you to endure it a little bit longer. 
You know, God's teaching you patience. If he didn't say it to this man, then he's not going to be found saying it to you. And that man goes, you have the power to heal me if you really want to. Being deeply moved with tender compassion. That means that when Jesus stands before you, he's being moved with deep compassion. Jesus reached out and touched the skin of the leper and told him, of course, I want you to be healed, so now be cleansed. You think he's going to tell you anything different? No. The church better wake up and take her place because if Jesus touched the leper, we better be touching the COVID-19s. Not one time. I'm going to get real with you, so put your seatbelt on. In that time, they had to yell unclean. They had to let people know way ahead of time, I'm coming, get out of the way. They had a little village of their own, so to speak. Body parts coming. They didn't come with perfectly looking skin. They came with missing body parts. Jesus never once said when he saw the leper, hang on. Hey, where's that medicine kit? Throw me some gloves. I know it sounds funny, but Jesus did not do that. He did not mask up. He didn't glove up. He didn't stand six feet and count them off. One, two, three. He didn't do that and go, mm. He didn't do that. Why? Maybe Jesus actually, actually believed the life that was in him was greater than the darkness in that man. I got good news for you. Jesus was bold, and he called his church to be bold. Jesus is your example. If Jesus did it, we better be finding ourselves doing it. If Jesus stand before, and you can't sit there and say, this will really rock religion upside the head, and it's fun doing it. So give me that Louisville slugger. I'll start swinging. You can't put Jesus in a category all by himself and say, because this is what religion will do. But it's Jesus. But the Bible says that he laid his deity down and came in the form of a man. That's when it's mic drop. He did everything as a man. Everything as a man. How do I know that? How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. If it was God, he didn't need to be anointed. God anointed the man, Jesus, to go out and to bring the kingdom of heaven at hand. We, it's not a time, if you've been born for such a time as this, God didn't make mistakes, Johnny Lee. That means wherever you go, the kingdom's at hand. No matter where you're laying roof, no matter where you're laying cement, no matter where you're going and you're working, Jesus is in that body of, her, of yours. And he wants you to open your mouth and be bold and show them that Jesus lives in a new Johnny Lee. Oh, you might have remembered the old Johnny Lee. I'll take you to where his uh, casket, <laughs> where the cemetery is. You can, see that, you can see the old Johnny Lee there. So here's the funny thing. Remember how you dated that? But, th but that you're not there, though. But the old man is. Because the new man's sitting right before me. That new man is right there, and Jesus Christ now lives in Johnny Lee. So that means that no matter where you go, Johnny Lee, you just brought the Christ on the scene. That means that nothing is impossible. But they're dead. Jesus is the master at raising people back from the dead, even himself. Well, but they have COVID-19. <sighs> Start laying your hands. Because the power source that is in you is greater. Every knee shall bow. At what name? The name of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the vine. You are the branch. So whatsoever is flowing in the vine is flowing through you. And whatever power's in the vine is greater than leprosy. That means that power is flowing through you. Jesus didn't say, hang on, let me get my pocketbook out and see if it's just got the Father's will to heal you. No. He said, of course I want you to be healed. So now be cleansed. And this is what happened. 
Instantly, his leprous sores completely disappeared and his skin became smooth. If Jesus did that with the leper, then we should be able to command COVID or monkeypox or whatever is named right now or whatever's coming because I'm sure there's some coming. In that name, we've been given the power and the authority. If we don't exercise that name and we don't take our place, then how is the kingdom of heaven going to manifest on the earth? Because God's done all that he's going to do. But he needs cooperation with the body. He's the head. We're the body. The body and the head better be in cooperation. He needs cooperation with the body to manifest some things in the earth. It disappeared and he had new smooth skin. Jesus sent him away with a very stern stern warning saying, don't say anything to anyone about what just happened. (laughs) Good luck with that, buddy. They know who you are. Isn't this, what? What happened? And then they got to hear about Jesus, and it wasn't just hearing about Jesus. They saw, they knew. that. Think about it. We, We forget the importance of that. That man had to leave his children and his wife, his whole family. He couldn't even be around them. Now he gets to go back and raise that daughter, raise that son, love on that wife. That sounds like restoration to me. Do we not serve the God of restoration? Don't say anything to anyone about what just happened, but go find a priest and show him that you've been healed. Then bring the offering that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a living testimony to everyone. But no sooner did the man leave (laughs) than he began to proclaim his healing. I'm I'm pretty sure that that Jesus, I'm sorry, but I'm probably going to disobey this one. (laughs) Tell the story everywhere. Jesus' growing fame prevented him from entering the villages openly, which is why he didn't want that to happen, which forced him to remain in isolated places. Even so, A steady stream of people flocked to him from everywhere. My friends, there were miracles everywhere that Jesus went. And we preach this same Jesus in the very same way today as what they did then, is what you're reading. He has never changed, my friends. The demons of sickness and disease knew him and the power that he carried as being a son of God. We carry the same Jesus and the same power So we need to expect the same results. Because it says, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus, the anointed one, is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. What about Mark chapter 9, verses uh, 38 through 40? Jesus spoke up. Well, let's go back. I don't know. We'll go ahead and just go there. Mark 9, 38 through 40. John spoke up and said, Teacher, we noticed someone was using your name to cast out demons. This is so good. John spoke up, one of his disciples, and said, whoa, master, hang on, teacher. We've noticed someone was using your name to cast out demons. In other words, he's saying, "Uh, they ain't one of us 12. This is what Jesus said. We noticed someone was using your name to cast out demons, so we tried to stop him because he wasn't one of our group. Jesus said, don't stop him. Jesus replied, For the one who does miracles in the power of my name proves he's not my enemy. And whoever is not against us is for us. See, demons come out in the power of that name. The power of the name of Jesus. So I'm telling you tonight, praise you you guys mind coming up and just whatever Holy Ghost tells you to pray. Pray. (laughs) Pray and play. There you go. Here's the mic. Getting a little tongue twisted tonight. Guys, I'm passionate about this. The, the, there's power in that name. Why have we made it so hard? It, it's how did you get born again? I'll make it really simple for you. I'm going to take out all the complications that religions tried to come in and throw at you to make it hard. It's simple. How did you get born again? How did you get born again? You believed. You believed. When I got born again, I don't know if any, I don't know if any fireworks went off. I don't know if a sign from heaven. I, I, don't, I don't know. An angel didn't. I, I believed. And that was a, Abraham simply believed. 
And what happened? What was the benefit of that? It was accounted unto him righteousness. Did you physically see with your eyes Jesus the moment you said, come into me, step right into you and sit down? I didn't. Maybe you did. Most people don't. But what happened? They believed. That same belief that got you in Jesus will get the same belief that got you in Jesus and got Jesus in you. That same belief will let Jesus out of you to minister healing to the sick. That same belief that got you born again is the same belief. It's simple trust. Simple trust. My daughter better every single time, all the time. If I say something to her, she better never once ever have to question my word. If she does, it is not the innocence of that child. It's my fault. Not one time has God said something. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. If he ever lied, we wouldn't be here right now because this whole thing was self-destruct. But though we're here, huh? That same belief, my friends, that got you born again, simple trust. God, you said it. I believe it. And by God, that settles it. And I'm signing the check and taking it to the to bank because it won't bounce is the same belief that's going to get you healed and delivered tonight. Now remember, it says every knee will bow. Every knee will bow. Everything has a knee. I don't care if you're a demon or you're a devil or if you're what your rank is. I don't care. If you're Satan's right-hand man, you're going to bow your knee. I don't care what assignment that demon was given of cancer or what affliction that that demon was given to go inflict upon a body. That knee will bow to the name of Jesus Christ and it'll happen tonight because you're a believing. Quit making it hard. Get all the junk and crap out of your mind. You're a believer because it's, it's the easiest thing you've ever done was believe. It'll be the easiest thing for you to do tonight to walk out those double doors healed and delivered and set free. Don't put your trust in the preacher because I'm not preaching about Nathan. I'm preaching about a man by the name of Jesus Christ. And he's here because I'm his home and you're his home. So will the church use their backbone? and be bold to preach the person in the name of Jesus and to go into a hurting world and kick out every demon and every sickness and every disease and get the same results that Jesus got. Why? Because it's Jesus that's living in you. So if you're here tonight as they continue to play, for those of you online, that name of Jesus is above every sickness and every disease that's going on in your body. So in the name of Jesus, if you're online, I want you to stretch your hands forth. And I command in the power and in the person of that name, Jesus, I release that name and that power that's in that name over and into your body. And I command for every pain, every discomfort, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity to bow its knee to the name of Jesus Christ. Every affliction. Everything that has bound your body and your life, loose its grip, bow your knee to the name of Jesus. And I command for change in your body and your life right now, instantly, by the power and the authority of that name, so be it. And if there's anything going on in your body or your life tonight while you're here, it's going to bow its knee to that name. You come down here and you find out because you will walk away differently in that name. So if you need minister to, come on down.
Guys, every miracle, every healing, every dead body coming back to life, every demon being cast out was an invitation for us to do the very same mighty miracles and do it in the power of that name. God did not let you be born for such a time as this to be weak, to be sickly, to be barely getting along. We're the ones that's wrapping this thing up. We're the ones that's passing the baton on to the next generation. Who's going to show Avery? Who's going to show Charlie what it's like to believe? Who's going to show them? Who's going to show them that Jesus lives in his man and woman and that can raise the dead and heal the sick? Because the sad thing is, it should be preached in every church, but it's not. But there's all there, there's a few that haven't let go of the miracle power of Jesus Christ, and that's one of them. This is one of them. Those are right there, miracle workers. Why? Because they're being taught in the home. They're being taught in the ministry how to believe how to know who they are in Christ, that Jesus Christ, the righteous one, lives in them. That's why we bring the children down and let them lay hands upon the sick. So they start using those little booster cables. Why? Because the same Jesus that healed the leper is the same Jesus that lives in them. And if they preach anything different than that, Jesus gave a warning to that. Whoa, you that caused my little ones to trip up. They better watch what they're preaching. Those are daughters of the King. Jesus Christ lives in them. The same Jesus that performed miracle signs and wonders is the same Jesus that lived in them. What kind of baton are we passing to them? It better be a baton of revival. It better be a, ton, a baton of who you are in Christ. It better be a, ton, a baton that the impossible is now made possible because the miraculous, miracle-working power of that name and person lives in you. And he lives in you. They haven't been boogered with religion yet. Let me take that word yet out of it because they're not going to be. Sometimes an adult's problem is because they heard too much other stuff that went contrary to the word because it was pe people's uh, things that they went to and they formed their belief out of what they went through instead of forming it out of, but that's not what the Bible says. So all this junk that says, well, but it runs in my family. If it doesn't run in Jesus, it doesn't have no business running in you. That's a good quote. You might put that on Facebook, hashtag if it doesn't run in the family of God, it doesn't run in you. But Nathan, come on, come back to reality. Man, it's just a part of getting old. Well, Moses wasn't in my group, and he lived to be 120, and his eyes were not dim, and his body wasn't weakened, and he didn't even have Jesus living in him. And I'm supposed to expect different results? No. No. Jesus put you and me here for such a time as this. Johnny Lee, come here. You work really hard, and you've been going through some stuff lately, and your body's been wanting to give you fits that you feel like you have to slow down. Well, who said you had to slow down? Who said that body's getting weaker? Yeah. Who lives in you? The Christ. The one. The Bible says that in him was life. That means that in you is life, and that life was the light of men. So that means that whatever, everywhere you go, whatever ran in daddy and mama's family, but it was hereditary. It got cut off and severed and broken the day you said yes to Jesus. And then you inherited his life, his nature in the name of Jesus Christ. strength in your body, but not your own strength, the strength of Jesus the Christ. Covering every pore and every inch of your body with supernatural strength to do every job, to do every work. You'll know when it's a time to work and you'll know when it's a time to relax, but it's not going to be because things are getting old and they're starting to fall apart. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Don't buy it. Jesus lives in you. You have his DNA. That divine 
nature of the Almighty. Just as Jesus is now, so is Johnny Lee right here sitting on that gray carpet, the Midwest Sewing Center. And there ain't no sickness and disease in Jesus. There ain't no weakness in Jesus. Then there ain't going to be in your body. And that goes for everybody out there. Don't buy that lie. Because Satan will do whatever he can to disguise it, to make it look good. But that's what the doctors say. And it's on CNB, CNN and whatever these news channels are. It's just a part of life. I've heard it all my life. Show me in the Bible where it says that. The Bible says he'll renew your strength. Don't buy the lie. Don't release that word curse over you and let your body respond to that. Don't do it. Let your body respond to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I can keep going. I better stop. I love you guys. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to preach the gospel. We'll be here next Tuesday, same place, same time. Friday, 6.30 to 7.30, hour of power. What does that mean? We pray for an hour and we do it with power and we get Jesus' results. And then Sunday, church at the MHC, 10 a.m., where we have the opportunity to love the hell out of people's lives. And hell looks a lot, it, it, it can come in a lot of different ways and forms. But it doesn't matter because Jesus is still there to kick it out of your body and out of your life. I love you guys. Thank you. Have a good evening.